Welcome to lab presentation two. Before you begin, you should have, and I'm referring back now to the moving ahead announcement that I posted on Sunday, March 22nd. And so at this point, before going on, you should have watched the Miracle of Life video. You should have viewed the female reproductive model and male reproductive model videos. And you should have filled in and become familiar with the appropriate figures from Lab Exercise 50 and Lab Exercise 51. So if you're not to that point yet, I suggest you go back and do that work and then come back for this lab presentation. Take a look now, if you would, in your lab manual on page 388. And let's go ahead and go through figure 50.1. And so notice then this is male reproductive system in sagittal view. And let's go ahead now and begin with the testis. And the testis is labeled number six. And we're looking at the lower left-hand part of figure 50.1. So a single testis. You should jot down here in your notes that the plural of testis is testes, T-E-S-T-E-S. -E -E and you should also know that the testes produce sperm cells. From here, we'll take a look at the scrotum, which is number seven. Again, lower left-hand portion of the figure. And notice then that the scrotum is this pouch of skin that holds the testes. Let's next trace the path of sperm cells out of the body during ejaculation. And we're looking now for structure number 11, which is the epididymis. And this is labeled lower right-hand part of the figure. Notice with an arrow uh, with a line then going over to the epididymis. You might want to jot down in your notes there are two of these. So we're seeing one in this sagittal section. And you can see the epididymis, each epididymis is situated on top of, resting on, a testis. And again, then we're going to trace the pathway of sperm cells, and so beginning in the testis into the epididymis. Find next then the ductus deferens, number one, upper left-hand part of the diagram as far as the label. And then you should jot down that another term for the ductus deferens is the vas deferens, V-A-S deferens. So the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. Go ahead now and follow that vas deferens as it leads away from the epididymis and takes this very long looping pathway up over the urinary bladder and then starts making its way back down. And at this point, I'd like you to find a seminal vesicle, number eight, and the label in the upper right area. And then notice, and it's very small, and it's hard to make it out, 
but coming away from that seminal vesicle, there's a short duct. And then notice that that duct merges with the vas deferens and the resulting duct, the result of the merger of the vas deferens and that small duct from the seminal vesicle, that structure which results from the merger is now the ejaculatory duct. And take a minute now and notice that the ejaculatory duct is labeled for you and the label off to the right, just underneath where it says seminal vesicle. If you follow the ejaculatory duct on down, you'll notice that it merges with the urethra, which is number two, labeled towards the upper left. And of course, the urethra then is coming away from the urinary bladder. Find next then the prostate gland, number nine, And it's not shown very clearly here because the openings are very, very small. But the prostate gland secretes into the, the prostate gland, again, secretes into the urethra. Notice next, as we follow the urethra on down, and again, we're following now the pathway of sperm cells that began way back in a testis. And next, notice that we have a pair of very small glands called bulbo-urethral glands, number 10. And you can see kind of just below the prostate gland, we're seeing one of these bulbo-urethral glands. You might want to jot down here that the bulbo-urethral glands are also called Cowper's glands. And if you think back to the Miracle of Life video that you watched, they use the term Cowper's glands rather than bulbo-urethral glands. And it's a bit difficult to see here, but you should realize that these bulbo-urethral glands also secrete into, also empty into the urethra. Following the urethra down past the bulbo-urethral glands now, and notice the urethra next, as we know, passes through the penis. And so the penis labeled number three for you, left hand side, label about halfway up, number three. And again, find the urethra passing through the length of the penis and to the outside of the body. Looking at the penis now, let's find a structure called the glans penis. This is structure number four. And so right at the very tip of the penis, the head of the penis, is the glans penis. Locate next structure number five, which is the prepuce. And this is another structure I'd like you to know an alternate name for. And so the prepuce is also called the foreskin, and that's F-O-R-E-S-K-I-N. So again, a synonym for the prepuce is the foreskin. And as you can see, this is a flap of skin that covers the gland's penis. Let's look next at several columns of tissue that run along the length of the penis 
And let's begin with the corpus spongiosum. Notice this is labeled for you, just above the label for the penis. And as you can see then, that corpus spongiosum is a column of tissue that surrounds the urethra in the penis. And you might make a note that there's just one of these, just one corpus spongiosum. Find next, in the same general area, another column of tissue referred to as a corpus cavernosum. And jot down in your notes that there are two of these. So one corpus spongiosum, two corpora cavernosa. Let's stop here and uh, we'll pick up with lab presentation three and we'll begin that presentation with figure 50.2.